So the Republicans today open this House impeachment inquiry of President Joe Biden. Six hours of a uh, big ass waste. Oh, did we have some good moments? And one of the best moments in the six hours is when Jasmine Kane, not Jasmine Kane, I'm sorry. I'm thinking Jasmine Kane, y'all about to say, Jasmine, I know Jasmine Crockett. Woo, Lord. Jasmine Crockett broke out the folding chair and walked in that room with hashtag team whip that ass. And here's what she had to say. She just laid out one of the Republican witnesses. Hit play. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Before I begin my questioning, I want to remind everyone that the information recorded in the FBI Form 1023 that my Republican colleagues keep citing is not evidence of anything. This form reflects years old, secondhand, unverified information from a Ukrainian oligarch as relayed to the FBI by a confidential human source. These unverified secondhand allegations have been repeatedly debunked and undermined, including by the confidential human source who relayed this information to the FBI, the tip recorded in the Form 1023 was thoroughly explored by the U.S. attorney handpicked by Donald Trump, which was Attorney, attorney General William Barr, and the assessment was closed. Finally, Devin Archer, Hunter Biden's former business partner who worked with the Ukrainian oligarch in question, told this committee in a transcribed transcribed interview in July that he had no knowledge of any such payments allegedly described in this form. Repeating the same lies will not somehow turn them into truths. Kind of like the election that Trump lost. Say it with me. He lost it. Repeating the same lie that he won wasn't going to turn the election around. The lost in this chamber keep pushing lies and lunacy on behalf of a multi-time loser. So if we're going to talk about China, let's go ahead and talk about China. And let's talk about the dealings. And let me point out the fact that right now, each of you has admitted that none of you are fact witnesses. We walked in without facts. And unfortunately, because what we say isn't necessarily evidence, we have wasted the American people's time and we are going to walk out of this chamber and we still have no facts that are leading to anything. But let me give y'all a, a little bit of tea while we're here. So I have a document that I will ask for unanimous consent to enter into the record. It's a fact sheet on President Trump's shady business dealings with the Chinese government. What, what, did, what are you entering in? A, a record from who? This is from the Congressional Integrity. Congressional yeah. Integrity Project, the dark money pack? I, I object. I object to that too. Of course y'all gonna object, but we gonna talk about it. What? So uh, it says, Trez Trump has extensive financial ties to the Chinese government. President Trump collected millions from Chinese. Of course y'all don't jack. We gonna talk about it. Who Representative Crockett all in the ass. Hit play. But we gonna talk about it. What? So uh, it says Trez Trump has extensive financial ties to the Chinese government. President Trump collected millions from Chinese government-owned entities while in office. I have the best tenants in the world, President Trump, was well aware of the multi-million dollar lease to Chinese interests. President Trump promised to donate foreign government, government profits while in office, but he donated less than a third of his proceeds from the Chinese government. President Trump maintained three foreign bank accounts while in office, including one in China. President Trump's business with China China raised legal and ethical concerns. President Trump, President Xi loves the people of China. He loves his country and he's doing a very good job. Let me tell you something. I don't want to talk about what y'all want to act like is some big mystery because we keep sitting here and Professor Gerhardt, just, just to be clear, as my colleagues have even tried to provide evidence, which they're not the ones to provide evidence, have you ever heard them say, if, since we've been sitting here for I don't know how long? Yes, I, I, um, I've been taking a tally. Oh, okay. Can um, you show us? Can you so tell us what the tally is? More than 35 times the Republican witnesses and Republican members of the committee have used the word if. Thank you so much um, for that. Because honestly, if they would continue to say if or Hunter and we were playing a drinking game, I would be drunk by now. Because I promise you, they have not talked about the subject of this, which would be the president. But let me tell you something that was so disturbing as I walked in to this chamber today. As I prepared, I said, what is the crime? 
Because when you're talking about impeachment, you're talking about high crimes or misdemeanors. And I, I can't seem to find the crime. And honestly, no one has testified of what crime they believe the president of the United States has committed. But when we start talking about things that look like evidence, they want to act like they blind. They don't know what this is. These are our national secrets. Looks like in the shitter to me. Did somebody say drink again? Hit play. This looks like more evidence of our national secrets, say on a stage at Mar-a-Lago. When we're talking about somebody that's committed high crimes, it's at least indictments, let's say 32 counts related to unauthorized retention of national security secrets, seven counts related to obstructing the investigation, three false statements, one count of conspiracy to defraud the United States, falsifying business records, conspiracy to defraud the United States, two counts related to efforts to obstruct the vote certification proceedings, one count of conspiracy to violate civil rights, 23 counts related to forgery or false document statements, eight counts related to soliciting, and I could go on because he's got 91 counts pending right now. But I will tell you what the president has been guilty of. He has unfortunately been guilty of loving his child unconditionally, and that is the only evidence that they have brought forward. And honestly, I hope and pray that my parents love me half as much as he loves his child. Until they find some evidence, we need to get back to the people's work, which means keeping this government open so that people don't go hungry in the streets of the United States. And I will yield. This is all I saw. Yeah! 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 All beating that ass Reese with a folding chair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jasmine, with the energy, I just, they're not ready. They're not ready for <laughs> this, this new crop of black women, black lawmakers, black men too, because Jamal Bowman brings them that work too. They're just not ready for black people showing up authentically in their space with all the volume, all the, the tone, all the 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 hands and the hands of the <laughs> hair flips. And you know, they're gonna throw a little shitter in there, a little cuss word, a little half cuss word in there. I just love it. I love it because I feel like there just needs to be a proportionate response to the absurdity and the theater that Republicans give. And the reality is the audacity that these Republicans have to getting ready to shut down the government. Also trying to criminalize Joe Biden because Hansa got some some crack shit, got some some gun shit going on. Meanwhile, their presidential nominee, who don't have to show up to the base because he's 60 points ahead of everybody else, got 91 charges. It's just all nothing but a farce. And I'm glad that you have people like Congressman Crockett. You also have people like uh, Congresswoman Summer Lee from Pennsylvania, who was giving it to him on a whole different so subject, um, really out there bringing it to him. Democrats, this is who you need to be looking at. I'm not saying everybody got to get all black girl magic on you because all y'all ain't black. But you have to bring some fire and some heat and some scorn and some contempt and some mockery and some receipts. If you can get all that together, maybe you can wake some people to hell up and realize what the hell is going on with the Republicans or the inmates running the asylum. And we cannot have that. Oh, absolutely. And, and Lauren, I was just sitting here like, just like, just... Mm. <laughs> Smack. I'm telling. Hey, remember we played that video when a white woman spit on the sister and she was beating her ass in rhythm? Woo! <laughs> Rocky was all over the, those fools. And they literally had nobody speaking today who had any firsthand knowledge, no information, no nothing. Even Republicans, Lauren, were going, what the hell was today all about? Yeah, they actually, a bunch of them left at the end when they were doing some of the final votes. There was a lot of Republicans who were missing. When you think about it from a communication standpoint, though, it's not a bad play for them. You put a bunch of junk out, um, you, you fill the machine with nonsense and lies and whatever, and you hope that the media repeats your nonsense. Donald Trump won with that message, messaging strategy in 2016. You just say a bunch of nonsense, doesn't matter if it's true or not. You know, it gets printed in some form. So that is what the House Republicans are doing. And the problem is when you run up against a Jasmine Crockett 
or a Jamal Bowman or AOC or a Hakeem Jeffries, who's very sharp on their feet with regard to messaging and returning fire, it doesn't work. And it particularly does not work in person. And that's where Jasmine Crockett really shines when she is, you know, sort of just laying everything out. You'll notice, too, that one of the Republican witnesses, uh, attorney Professor Jonathan Turley, basically got in there and said the opposite of what the Republicans wanted him to say, because even he couldn't bring himself to uh, basically embarrass himself on, on television, on national television, because there's nothing here. There's no evidence. But you can see what the Republicans are doing. They're trying to... They're trying to marry the word impeachment to Joe Biden over and over and over and over again. I do wish the Democrats would add to some of their messaging, which has actually been fairly good from Jamie Raskin and, of course, Crockett, the Jared Kushner-Donald Trump issue, which, if you're the Republicans and you're arguing that Hunter Biden was using his influence to somehow benefit something he was doing and that somehow the president was involved, I'm not sure how the Democrats are not bringing up Jared Kushner and Donald Trump. But at any rate, it's so absurd what they're doing, and there is no connection, that the Democrats are basically just blowing them up right now. And see, here's my... Hey, hey Reese, ask, and ye shall receive. <laughs> Go to my iPad. Their rent money is coming from. Many of them vote Republican, but I'd bet you not one of them cares more about Hunter Biden's laptop or helping Kevin McCarthy keep his gig as leader or speaker of his dysfunctional caucus than they care about receiving their paycheck and making their ends meet. And so the Republicans on this committee are betting that we'll spend this hearing engaging in partisan bickering over their favorite buzzwords rather than talking about how the MAGA shutdown will crush all of our constituents. To be honest, I don't quite care about a uh, private citizen hunter uh, whom the proper authorities are dealing with or the cable news culture war distractions. I care about the seven million babies, children, mothers across this country who after Sunday will lose access to food and formula, over 10,000 in my district alone. I care about 300,000 families of 20,000 veterans who after Sunday could face eviction from their homes, rare diseases uh, and cancer patients whose experimental trials will be delayed for months. And I care about our seniors unable to get help with Social Security and Medicare. And make no mistake, their attacks are targeted, both in who's behind them and who are going to be hurt, hurt most. The most marginalized folks bear the brunt of these MAGA Republicans' attacks. Black folks, brown folks, trans folks, poor folks, disabled folks. Keeping that struggle in mind, we've had two hearings on the infant formula shortage on the subcommittee chair, chaired by Congresswoman McClain. Yet, with the 320,000 babies, women, and children in her home state of Michigan about to go hungry due to her party's shutdown, it seems like my Republican colleagues only care about an issue when they can point the finger in another direction, much like what's going on in this embarrassment of a hearing today. Mr. Gearhart, in one of your recent op-eds, and you have repeated it here, you mentioned that a good test for assessing the constitutionality of a governmental action is to switch the names of the political parties and the actors involved. If the outcome is the same, it is a good sign of neutrality. If the outcome is not the same, then there's a good chance that partisanship is the driving force. I think we can safely say that this inquiry would fail that neutrality test. And since I I don't have time. I think we can say that we are here, America, in this sham hearing, prioritizing the political needs of the Republican Party, pushing a lie for Donald Trump as you go hungry and you lose your homes. Shameful. At I the request back. of the witch. Woo! See, that's what I'm talking about, Reese. If you're going to bring that heat, I'm talk that's what you should do. You should, nah, uh, okay. You should, if you're going to bring that heat, that's what you got to do. I keep trying to say to folk, you cannot play nice with these people. You cannot sit here and dance with these people. Come on, bring it here. You cannot. Matter of fact, Reese, this is what Joe Biden should do. Joe, so they call Joe Biden old, Reese. Joe Biden should sit here and get a cane and just do this here. Y'all want to swing? Let's swing. Because <laughs> that's what you have. Throw the, throw the cap in the air and say, Calvary, they want to swing. Let's swing. Yeah. Well, clearly they got the right people on their team right now in these hearings because everybody's about that action. And I do have to say, I do have to add, though, Lauren, um, that Congressman Robert Garcia 
did do a whole presentation about Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. And so they definitely are talking about it on the Democratic side in these hearings about the hypocrisy of children being even a part of the question when Jared Kushner got how many billions of dollars from the Saudis or whatever the situation may be. But the reality is, to your point, Roland, I mean, I love what 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 Congresswoman Lee did there, uh, Summer Lee, which is bring it back to the receipts. The Republicans have nothing but distractions. We saw nothing but distractions on that debate stage last night. They have nothing but distractions with these hearings because the reality is, uh, once again, when Republicans get control of any part of the government, the government does not function properly. And more so... Kevin McCarthy is the weakest, sorriest leader in a string of sorry-ass Republican leaders, mind you, who cannot control his caucus. He had a deal that was negotiated with President Biden back in May, and he can't get his caucus on board. And so I'm glad that um, in the midst of dragging these Republicans, the witnesses, the sham-ass case about impeachment, they are still bringing it back to the fact that the Republicans are trying to harm our country with another pointless shut down just two days away now. You know what, Lauren? I had, just the other day, somebody, I was going through the checks and somebody sent me a note uh, telling me, Roland, you know, you shouldn't be going. I don't know who this woman was. She said, uh, I watched the show, but uh, <laughs> as Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we, we go high. Let me be real clear, okay? I like Michelle Obama. I appreciate her being first lady. Damn that. <laughs> Damn that. I'm like homeboy. Chair, whoop the ass with a chair. <laughs> cane, beat the ass with a cane. If they go low, you punch their ass in the stomach. If they hit you in the knees, you punch their ass in the ankles. If they hit yes. you in the ankles, you punch their ass in the bottom of their feet. I, yo, what we are dealing with, the attacks on black people, the attacks on young people, the attacks on poor people, this ain't no time to go high. This ain't no time to be playing nice. When you in a street brawl, you ain't sitting here going old school, oh, no, we throwing punches. Hell no. When you're in a street ball, you beat the ass with a cane, with a chair, with a branch, because it's all about winning, because that's how they play. That's how they, oh, yeah. they care about. So, Lauren, I don't want to hear none of that go high bullshit. I'm talking about winning, and that means destroying the opposition. Yeah, and this is all happening, too, at a time when the Republican Party is really melting down into something unrecognizable in terms of policy and a president, uh, a former president running again who's talking about destroying the federal system right in front of our face. Uh, and thanks, Reese. I stand corrected. I'm glad that... <laughs> I'm glad they brought up the Kushner thing uh, because that definitely needs to be uh, brought up. Uh, you'll notice uh, that their so-called best over there on the Republican side, at least in Congress... And the Democratic side, their best is, is really not to be matched. I mean, Summer Lee, some of these younger members who have just come in uh, who are younger millennials, uh, I think Crockett is 42 and Summer Lee is, is in her mid 30s, uh, they're, they're better than Marjorie Taylor Greene's and Lauren Boeber. So they can't really okay. keep up. And you sort of saw that. Like James Comer cannot keep up with some of these nope. more savvy, uh, presentationally savvy members, many of whom are members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, and their messaging. I mean, they just cannot keep up. There's a lot of complaining, you know, that you hear a lot of times online about the Congressional Black Caucus being too old, this, this, and that. I'm not a big believer in putting down older politicians because that's where the power is. That the power is in the chairmanships and the chairwomanships and the people like Maxine Waters and, that, and all that. But it is nice to see some of the younger members who are more uh, savvy about their communication skills show up huge and, and certainly... To me, my personal favorite is Jasmine Crockett, but uh, my New York Bronx homie there, Jamal Bowman, is my other personal oh, favorite. Yeah. In terms of the messaging strategy, oh, yeah. he really brings it really hard. You might remember the video of him and Marjorie Taylor Greene outside the house step. Oh, yeah. Uh, in which he basically said to her, you know, it's funny, his message basically was, you know, you you talk all the time, but you solve you solve no problems. You know, solve a problem. <laughs> like you you you're always talking, but there, you bring nothing. Yep. And that is, should be the central message from the party. 
at a time when literally our democracy is at stake. Yep. Uh, I'm laughing is my final comment. I'm laughing because uh, somebody in the group chat posted a comment that I'm cracking up, Arisa and Lauren, because literally my daddy told me the same thing. Uh, when I was, uh, he, he got a phone call from a teacher uh, who felt that I was talking too much in class. Uh, my dad <laughs> said, if you go back to the class and you don't shut your ass up, I'm going to stomp a mud hole in your ass. <laughs> Somebody put that in the group chat and I hollered and I stood there looking at my dad like, what is a mud hole? Uh, then I didn't want to have to find out what it was. Uh, but then again, I told my dad he really should be apologizing to me because all that talking in class, I was practicing for what I'm doing right now. Uh, and as he watching the show uh, in uh, my house uh, in Jasmine Crocker's district. So uh, all that talking paid off. Uh, and sh a shout out, I can't remember my fan, one of my fans who sent me this cane about three years ago. I don't know if y'all saw it, they made this cane for me, got my name on it. I uh, got Roland Martin, I got A5A unfiltered on the other side, so I had to pull it out.